So welcome to Bees at the Abbey. We're taking a tour today around these award-winning gardens and looking at the flowers and the bees that um, are around. So I hope you'll enjoy it. So this is lavender. Um, you can see that the bees love it. They love the nectar and the pollen that it provides. But we really know it for its smell, which is one of my favorite smells. And traditionally, it's been used for all sorts of reasons, so it's really good in your closet. And I'm sure you might know when you were younger, perhaps putting lavender sachets in your drawers to make them smell fresh. I like my favourite thing to do with it, which I can't do in this garden because it's open to the public, is to lay out my washing over a lavender bush, which is a go goes back centuries, but it means that your, la your washing dries beautifully and it's scented all the way through with lavender, which is wonderful. So what is pollination? Bees travel from flower to flower looking for nectar mostly to feed themselves and as they do so they quite often pick up pollen which is the male part of the flower and they transfer that on their back legs, they catch it on their sort of the hairs on their back and they take that to the next flower and then that's used to fertilise the female part of the flower making seeds. So we desperately need bees in our gardens to pollinate or we wouldn't have next year's flowers. So these are all my lovely dahlias and we're really proud of them. It wasn't too long ago that dahlias became quite unfashionable and I'm really pleased that now they are achingly fashionable. They're really good for just taking photographs, so they've sort of had this resurgence, which is great. Um, and dahlias are interesting in the sense that originally they came over from Mexico um, and they were brought over as something you could eat. People thought that you might be able to eat them the same way that you could eat potatoes, um, but which didn't work. So we were left with these fantastic range of flowers, which the bees love, um, and you'll see bees all over them on a good day. So most bees actually live solitary lives and don't produce honey, but the bees that we know best and the bees that we love the best are the honeybees, and they are bees that live together in a colony and they spend their entire summer harvesting nectar from plants in order to make honey, which is what they then use to keep themselves alive over winter. So this is the wonderful Californian tree poppy, um, which is a member of the poppy family. So in this country, our poppies tend to be much smaller and you find them in cornfields, the beautiful red ones. We've all kind of remember those from our childhood, I hope. Um, but this is a very glamorous cousin, this one. And it's quite often known as the fried eggplant, which I think is a wonderful name for it because of its yellow center and its white petals. It's slightly fragrant, which is quite nice, and that helps to attract bees. And you can see in the middle of it, all of these stamens which have pollen on, which make it super, super tasty and something for bees to come to. So this plant is inside my wonderful glass house. So it's protected from winter weather and it is the rather wonderful angel's trumpet. And this is one of those plants that you would think that bees would love this, because it's a glorious flower, isn't it? But actually, because it comes from a hot country, um, and bees are quite rare, they don't fly in the day in the heat. So actually, it's scented at night and pollinated by moths, um, and sometimes even hummingbirds. So when a bee collects nectar from a flower, um, it takes it back to the hive um, and we all know the shape of a beehive, that wonderful kind of country shape that we all know and love. Um, inside it does something very interesting, so it passes on that little bit of nectar via its mouth to another bee who then passes it on to another bee and on to another bee until eventually a lot of the liquid has evaporated 
and that's when they will then put it into one of their tiny hexagons that they've built. They do this themselves with wax from underneath their, their body parts. Um, it's the perfect shape and efficient shape for holding, for storage, it's wonderful. Inside there, they'll put their honey um, that's been really, really sort of had all its liquid taken out and then they will cap it um, ready for use in winter when they need that extra food source because there are no flowers available. So I remember these gardens when I was very little and they were open for free then and I used to come into the back entrance and I'd look round and there would be this explosion of colour with beds full of colourful flowers and then of course there was always the palm house and I used to go around that and I was convinced that there were tigers living in there but it was a wonderful exotic place um, this is what it looks like again today <laughs>